Hey guys, today I want to give an honest review of the Honda Ridgeline. This is a Gen 2. I've had this truck for a couple of years now, and it's given me enough time to appreciate what I really like about this truck and what I don't like about it. And yes, I might be calling this a truck throughout the video, so just strap in. Hopefully you're okay with that. So let's get to it. In terms of bed space, it's got one of the largest boxes of any mid-sized truck, about five and a half feet deep and about five feet wide, uh, which is more than adequate for a vehicle of this size. I was looking at a few other vehicles, um, Maverick, Santa Cruz, a little too small in terms of the bed size, but this one has a very comparable bed size to other mid-sized trucks. A couple of points to note about this bed, uh, one of them being the tailgate audio, which is cool. I think I've used it maybe once. It's a little gimmicky, but if you were someone to tailgate or something like that, it could come in handy and it's pretty fun. Um, another thing is I'm glad that they did introduce an outlet in here. It's also a little storage space, like a little cubby if you want to throw a couple ratchet straps or whatever. Um, so that is a nice feature too. One thing to note that I didn't love is the location of these lights here, which are on the side of the bed. Typically trucks will have them up there by the tail light. Uh, I think the old Ridgeline actually had them along the sides here. Um, that makes sense because that illuminates your cargo. If you arrive at night and this thing is full of whatever, then you can't see anything because the lights are blocked. So having it up high, I think Honda should address that and reintroduce lights up here. Which makes a little more sense for practicality. Anyone who's ever reviewed the Ridgeline has, of course, shown you this feature, which is the dual action tailgate. You've seen this a thousand times, I'm sure. You're bored of it. Uh, I'll just show you the practical uses that I've put in this trunk here, which is pretty damn adequate. I mean, you've got the half size spare there. I've got a couple moving blankets, a milk crate full of jumper cables, tow hitch, bathing suit, because you never know. Frisbee is important. Tarp, fix a flat. Now there is a cooler in here that I've got just from Home Depot, because even though there is a plug all the way down here, I tried filling it up with ice once. It's not an insulated cooler, so you will be going through ice. I figured this is a pretty nice size cooler that you can fit in here along with everything else you need. So that's just the faster, much easier way to do it. But yeah, it's a great amount of space. You really do have a lot of extra square footage to work with in here. So that is a nice perk. And of course it is waterproof and it is locking. So you don't have to worry about all that stuff getting taken out. Another thing I do like is that anyone who has tried emptying out their tailgate knows that if you try sweeping things, that ends up right here. This is where a lot of the sticks and debris go. So this is a really nice feature to be able to open this door and just sweep everything right onto the ground, keeping everything nice and clean. So that is a huge bonus here. Also, I'm a big fan of these rear fold-up seats, which provide more usable space in the back than any other midsize I've driven. I store a ton of stuff long-term back here and can still throw in a bike without removing any wheels. I can easily throw in another bike in the bed, which lets me transport two bikes without any racks or add-ons or anything, which is great. So in terms of rideability, I mean, that's where I think this thing really shines. You know, if you are going off road a lot or if you're carrying a boat, then yeah, maybe this isn't your vehicle. For me, I'm never really doing that stuff. If I am, it's very, very light off-roading, very small towing. Um, some people are like, you know, this thing is basically an SUV with a bed. I don't know, maybe that's not a bad thing. I mean, to be honest, it handles better than any truck I've had. Uh, it performs around turns well, it accelerates well. Um, so in terms of that, then it's great. If you're doing off-roading, don't do any off-roading that you wouldn't do in a pilot and you should be fine. Um, but for me, I just want a bed. I want to throw messy, dirty objects in the back without getting a SUV dirty. Um, but in terms of everything else, it's comfortable for long rides. There's more leg room than any truck I've had. My passengers enjoy it more than any truck I've had. Um, and I enjoy it in terms of long rides and it's just a comfortable, smooth vehicle to be in. So in that respect, it's very good. You're not gonna have rear locking differentials. It's not a true four wheel drive, but you know that going into it. I think 80 to 90% of people who have trucks aren't somewhere in the mountains where they need off-roading. They're not towing boats every day. Um, so this thing is 
perfectly adequate to suit most people in what they really need a truck to do. The truck handles well in the snow, and though you don't need to weigh the bed down with sandbags, it provides confidence in acceleration and in turning when paired with good snow tires or all-terrain tires. When it comes to this interior overall, I think they did a pretty good job. I like the layout of it. I like that the temperature controls are separate. You don't have to go digging through any menus for that. Um, the layout here is pretty decent. I like the original sliding storage bin here. I know they're getting rid of that for the 2024. Um, I will also miss this actual shifter stock, which I know they're getting rid of, or they have already gotten rid of for push buttons and you have to turn the auto start on and off and all that new stuff that's kind of trickling in, in my opinion, is getting a little annoying. Also, this radio doesn't seem to have been updated that much besides a volume knob. Uh, it's still kind of clunky, still kind of outdated in my opinion. No integrated CarPlay. I mean, the newer models have it, but this one doesn't. But overall, I mean, I think they did a pretty good job in here. Uh, it's pretty clean pretty organized. Another thing that's interesting is for whatever reason, it seems the Canadian models of these trucks, or at least they used to have a lot more features. Um, I don't know if they're starting to come in now on the newer US models, even though this truck is made in the US, uh, they had rear heated and ventilated back seats, um, a back seat temperature control, rain sensing, wipers, power mirrors, um, integrated CD player, just a ton of extra features that even in the black edition or RTLE, we did not get in the US model. So I don't really know what that's about, but um, besides that, the trucks have pretty much leveled out. As, as they've gone through the generations, uh, it seems like there's a lot more features on the 23, 24 models coming out. So that's a good thing. But yeah, I, it is kind of interesting what they did skimp on, even though this truck was designed and made here, so. So one thing we can throw in the cons column is this bumper. Uh, anyone who's used a truck knows that when the tailgate comes down, you need a place to put your feet so you can get up. Um, jumping up onto the tailgate or from the wheel is not always the best option. So a lot of times the best option is to jump on that corner of the bumper. Uh, I've seen a lot of trucks, even the Santa Cruz has this where they have a little cutout in the bumper so you can put your foot, jump up from there. That's great. Next best thing would be to actually be able to use the bumper. But if you see this, this is not really anything you could put your weight on. This is just kind of a cheap car bumper that you can already tell I dislocated the one time I tried to actually step on this thing. It's just not made for putting your weight on, which means you just have to find another way up there. And I think Honda can do better here. I think they really need to just make a proper bumper so that you can actually get up into this bed more easily. One thing I did not love is when I first got this, it did not have a locking tailgate. Um, I had to add this as an aftermarket part basically and install it myself. I know the new ones do have locking with the key, so that's good, but that's something that should have been included, I think, right from the start from Honda. So this is another thing that we could throw into the cons category is this message that has been popping up um, on and off now for the few years that I've had this car, I've had the transmission flushed, uh, it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference, but uh, transmission and blind spot, which somehow are linked, this message will come up uh, fairly frequently and it gives a little bit of concern for what this could actually mean. It seems to be a pretty common issue with these ridge lines from 2017 to 2020. Um, and it's until they swapped out that transmission, something that I've seen a lot on forums and everything like that. So certainly makes me a little uneasy. Uh, I haven't noticed any actual difference in drive quality, uh, no hesitating or anything like that, but still not the kind of message you want to get from a car that's just a few years old, certainly. So some of my final thoughts in this vehicle are that for what it is, I think it's been a great truck so far. Uh, you know, it's a few years old. Like I said, there's a few things to iron out, but it kind of checks most of the boxes that I want. Um, somehow it fit into this weird reputation of being a NART, not a real truck. Mostly people's arguments are that it's a unibody frame, which, I mean, that's a pretty weak argument at this point. Um, that means the Cybertruck, the Rivian, the Avalanche, Maverick, Santa Cruz, there's a ton of unibody trucks. Regardless, yeah, it, it does what you need it to do. 
and I'm pretty happy with it. If they can tweak a few more things, if they can not get rid of things that are good, which a lot of companies do, then I think there's a pretty good vehicle here overall. I, I think if you don't need a real truck truck and you just need something comfortable, reliable, I'm kind of city folk. So as long as I have something that I can rely on and it's a good, comfortable ride, then that's all that really matters to me. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you got something out of it at least. You know, feel free to throw in what you like and what you don't like. And let's see if this thing can keep chugging 150, 200,000 miles and see where we are then if we need to do another review. Um, but right now, pretty content with what we got out of this truck. So let me know if you have any other thoughts and we'll go from there.